Hi, this is Robin Greenwood, and you're watching Feed My People Joy. Today I'm going to go over one of the on uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, God created men in his image of one spirit, and when, disobeyed, and when men disobeyed God, they were disconnected from the life, and they became, disconnect, they became connected to the devil. And the spirit was dead to God under Satan. The men, a person needs to be born again. And when you ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you're born again to the family of God. And from the family of Satan, your spirit again has got life in it. And the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. The Father, Son, and the Spirit are all one. They just have different functions. So you say something like this, like the muscle of God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also a separate identity. He has his own personality and his own purpose and his own mission. And the ministry of Jesus was to first pray the price for our sins, for our treatment of our sin, and then to redeem us from all the curse of sin and death. And he did by uh, dying on the cross as our substitute, paying for our lifetime of sin. The next was to, to, uh, to demonstrate how a child of God was supposed to walk on the earth as a king in the kingdom of God. And he did that by walking around destroying the works of the devil, bringing justice. Now, um, as he is, he's in heaven now interceding for us, and the Holy Spirit, he sent down as his representative to us and to live in us, to bring uh, heaven on earth through the kingdom of God in us. And we need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit helps us um, wrestle against principalities in heavenly places, and, and our battles in our spirit us. Uh, a physical one, but a spiritual one, and our weapons are spiritual, and the Holy Spirit is um, what causes us to have victory, and what we fight with. The Holy Spirit lives inside of our spirit. He's He's the power of God. He's a guarantor and sealer of our salvation. He also bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Now, let's take a look at uh, the Holy Spirit in the New Testament and what it says about the disciples. Uh, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him. And um, I don't know how to get that out of the way there. I'll put my spirit upon him. He'll show judgment to the Gentiles. And it's to your advantage that I go away, for if I don't go away, the helper will not come to me. But if I depart, he'll come to the world of sin. And remember, that's only one sin. And what is that sin? Because they don't believe in me. Okay, the judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. That's why he's judging the world because the ruler, because the ruler of the world is judged. Um, then in Luke it says the Spirit of the Lord is here because he has anointed me to uh, preach the gospel to the poor. Well, this is all judgment. Um, preach the gospel to the poor so they don't have to be poor no more. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach, um, deliver the captives, and recover his sight to the blind, to set liberty then the bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's why he was anointed. He went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil, because all sickness, disease, poverty, lack, fear, death is all from the devil. Now, up here on the top of page three is the purposes of the Holy Spirit. In, he's our comforter, counselor, teacher, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener. And he works miracles by faith with the Spirit. He's our power over all the power. And there's things that we can't effectively without the Holy Spirit. Love works through the Holy Spirit because faith works through love. And love's been poured out in our spirit uh, through the Holy Spirit. He guides us in all truth. He reveals God's words, His voice, His witness. Led by the Spirit, we crucify the flesh by the power of the Spirit. Uh, and here's our scripture. We pray. The Spirit helps pray. We can't pray without the Holy Spirit. Uh, you can get these, um, this uh, track uh, free on my website. Download, copy. Uh, it uh, folds in three and uh, use it to, to witness other people. He makes this rapture ready. He gets us prepared. Um, let's see. He gives us power to preach and teach. He makes us rapture ready. He makes us righteous. He gives us freedom from sickness, disease, hate, lack, fear, bondage, and so on. And he seals our salvation. He is the guarantor of our salvation. Okay, that's it on that page. Um, so we'll go to part two now. Okay. Now. Um, you feel the spirit, you will speak in a heavenly language called tongues, which is very, very important. And the purpose and the power of tongues is, first of all, we speak to God, we speak mysteries, we are edified, build up, and energize ourselves. And we build ourselves up in our most holy faith, and it keeps us love and praying in the Holy Spirit. It also is rest and refreshing, 
praying in the spirit and tongues reveals mysteries, thoughts, intents, and purposes of God and the God. He shows us things to come, plans for a future. He reveals what belongs to us that Jesus bloodied for us to have. He's uh, We have fellowship with him. The Holy Spirit in the tongues is for everyone who is saved. All you have to do is receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you read this scripture, Acts 2.23, go home, stay in if you're at home, whatever. It's a promise to you and to your children and to all that are far off. And that's all of us. You're far off and your children's children of the children's children's children. Okay, tongues is a weapon. It's a gift. That's given to us to intercede and bring your will on heaven on earth as it is in heaven. It's God's language without our mind interfering or our knowledge or lack of knowledge um, interfering. Um, now, First Corinthians 12 is an area where people say, well, not everyone speaks in tongues. But if you look at First Corinthians 12, he's talking about in the church. Not everyone at church speaks has the office or whatever of speaking in tongues. Uh, not everybody gives the tongues and interpretation in church, only those who tongues in church. Um, there's a difference. We're all called to use tongues as a prayer language to bring God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And he said, go, this is, this is very, very important scripture. He says, um, as you go into the world, preach the gospel, and these signs will follow them that believe. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, that nothing debatable about that it said that you'll speak in you will speak in tongues if you believe now if you don't believe you're not going to speak in tongues you're not going to have all the other things that I went over on um, the other side of this uh, track you have to speak in your tongues it is a gift and it is an empowerment okay and alert confirms the signs it's a sign and a wonder um, strong definition it's a sign uh, it's an unusual occurrence uh, transcending the concourse to a sign of signs of uh, portening, whatever that word is, portening, um, a remarkable events soon to happen of miracles and wonders by which God authenticates men or by which man proves that cause they are pleading with his gods. Okay, so go to um, robinbremer.net and you can copy the track. Very important track to get people filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. We're created in His image. We live in a body. We have a soul. Jesus is the flesh God used to walk on the earth. Um, and we're the flesh now that He lives in. So my name is uh, Robin Bremer, and uh, this is Feed My People. And go to the website and get the free, and that's it for today.